Welcome back to our favorite activity, drawing characters based on only the descriptions. Let's jump into the prompts of character number one, which you will see unveiled on this sketch of a Mr. Potato Head. Character one is a dwarf with short legs and fingers, with a large protruding forehead and one green eye and one black eye. They have thin, very pale yellow hair that can appear white. It's a real mixed bag here. With mixed yellow, white and black beard. This is like a real mishmash with a squashed in ugly face. That's in quotes, squashed in is the face description missing most of their nose with a massive scar across the face. The atmosphere is medieval fantasy. Most of us can guess who he is, but that doesn't matter. This is my design prompt. So I have all of the features here. I am just gonna tuck this off into the corner and start drawing my uh, poor mutilated dwarf. I gotta jump into it all with my construction, focusing on getting the proportions right first, especially because there are specific features like a protruding forehead and short fingers that I need to make sure are shown off as features. Finalize it by reproportioning it to try and get the right balance. At the end of the day, I went for a bit of a morose expression. And in this instance, this is someone who's pretty hard done by a massive scar across their face. And given that most of their nose is missing, it's probably not one of those cool, like, eye across their aesthetically pleasing scars. It's more like a, the not fun scars. Are there fun scars? There are not fun scars. There are cool scars. This is not a cool scar. <laughs> Now the description also says that he has a squashed in face, which you try and achieve by having the brows sort of angled in together and sort of hooded eyelids. That combined with how the scar and the forehead proportion the face differently to most faces, we end up with a foundation I think works pretty well. All right, now it's on to slapping in some color. This one's pretty straightforward. It doesn't describe anything that they're wearing. It's just like yellowy, light, near white blonde hair. Being so blonde, I'm gonna assume they're pale skinned. Everything else is pretty standard. Now the beard is where it gets a little bit weird because one would normally mix in bits of white or bits of black, but to have sort of blonde beard with white and black, I'm not sure how to achieve this really effectively, but it does create the effect of making them look, I don't know, a bit dirty. I tried to do it with like some graying and white bits along the side of the beard, sort of like Bob Ross has, but otherwise the colors are pretty straightforward. I played with a few different colors for a shirt and in the end went with a desaturated burgundy to get a bit more of that medieval feel in there. With a few of those details and finishing touches, making it pop with the green and black of the eye and the highlights of the hideous scar, our first character's concept has come together pretty well. In the previous versions of this video, I've always benefited from having a really simple, very badly drawn version of all the features on a character. I think I've mastered this system with the Mr. Potato Head method. Now I'm gonna try and do four characters in this video, which is usually pushing it a little bit, but I can do it because I have help. So I'm gonna hand this over to Alicia to take to the next level so we can get as much characters done in this video as possible, as best as possible. Take it away, Alicia. Here is our version of character one, and now we reveal who character one is. Of course, it's Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones. Now, that would have been pretty easy to guess, but what's interesting is the one most of us know is the one from the show, who is far less hideously represented. I mean, Peter Dinklage, he's a very handsome guy. He is not as malformed as he's described. But here are a few pieces by different artists representing what he was described to look like in the book. I think we did really well here. Let's do another one. All right, jumping into character number two on our Mr. Potato Head. This character is an extremely thin humanoid with big circular yellow eyes and bright red irises. They have light gray, almost blue skin with spiky black hair and thin blue gray lips. They have sharp, almost pointed teeth and abnormally long limbs with rings on fingers and spiky black puffs of leather on the shoulders. Spiky puffs of leather. Let's just jump into it. Again, put in a box what your guesses are. We're just 
following the prompts. And any details that we might need to create ourselves have to come from this foundation that we've been given. I like to approach these like a character design brief, imagining I work for a movie or a game studio. And unless context or style is given to me, which in most of these cases it isn't, I'm gonna go with my style or infer what the style may be based on the prompts. And in this case, I don't really have anything to anchor to other than the physicality of this character, which is really what I'm focusing on. With the exception that as the pose and proportions come together, the details that keep wanting to happen are kind of gone to be honest. Which is why I've added details like some piercings and leather gloves and chains and belts. I also made the jacket like a normal jacket, meaning it ends higher up on the arms than it would on a normal person's arms because that can hopefully accentuate the extremely long limbs. All the colors on this piece and the character are generally really cool or dark or pale. And given that we have those popping yellow eyes, I use that yellow or gold as a bit of a highlight throughout the rest of the character, just in little bits as a garnish. Now, I really like this outcome so far, and it's also kind of mysterious. We don't know where they're from. They're a bit androgynous, very cool looking, very gothic. Let's give it to Alicia for a couple of hours and then we'll have the reveal. So this is what we ended up with, and this is what it is. Okay, Ryuk from Death Note. Now, again, that one was pretty easy for me to guess, but it is very interesting how unique the character ends up looking, especially in that anime style. A very human Ryuk. I don't know, it's sort of fun. It feels like a really cool Ryuk cosplay. That's also really verging towards Hades from Hercules. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Let's do another one, because this is awesome. Caricature 3 is a large, muscular, red-skinned, ape-like man with a tail. Starting strong, right out the gate. Two large horns cut off and filed down with oversized stone right hand and cloven hooves. They wear a long leather coat, a utility belt, and shorts. The atmosphere is modern day. Let's see what that looks like. I actually threw in a few ape references here because I needed to lean on the ape proportions more than anything, especially because there's a lot of animalistic traits about this character. And with the large muscularity, it really feels like this is gonna be someone much more monstrous than our previous characters. Took a bit of working and reworking to get the pose right, but with it all in place, it's just a matter of adding the coat and a few of those other standout features like the utility belt and shorts to bring it together. Now, as you can see with my sketch, I leaned into a much more cartoony direction, I think because the prompts were so wild, like very extreme, like big coat, massive single hand, muscular anatomy, like ape-like, cloven hoof, all that stuff feels to me like almost a Teen Titans character, or someone made for a comic book or video game. I'm gonna lean further into that style and go with a bit more of a hard edged inky look for this one. Using my Impact ink brush from my custom brush set, which is by the way, my favorite ink brush. I have a different ink brush called Jazz's Ink, but Impact is my new love and you can see why. It's just got that sharp texture and if you press lightly, you just get a little bit more of that grit, but otherwise it's a really sharp and nicely detailed and characterized brush. And with the line work down, it's now time to block out the different areas of color, ready to go into some shading and painting. This is starting to look really, really cool. And it sort of goes to show how quickly you can get an awesome look just by using the right brushes. Getting good art really is a mix between having the skills and having the tools, which is why Alicia and I made our awesome digital brush set, featuring 83 incredible brushes for Photoshop, Procreate, Clip Studio Paint, and more from pencils, oils, inks, charcoals, watercolors, and loads of special effects brushes, all made to work together beautifully. We worked for ages to fine tune this to make the perfect brush set and made an epic guidebook to show you how to do digital paintings like this. With the right skills and right brushes, 
Everything you do can look cooler, from your rough sketches and concept arts, all the way to the masterpieces that take you many days to find you. Go check it out, links in the description, and because I love you with all my heart, I'm gonna give you a 10% off coupon code to the already 20% off bundle that has the brushes and the handbook. That's a total of 30% off of the digital painting bundle, which you can get for a limited time. Use the code PASSWORD. Sorry, I had to think on the spot. I'm not good at thinking on the spot. Let's finish this bad boy up. Now this is a showcase of what you can achieve with awesome brushes in about an hour. Let's hand it over to Alicia for a while and show what can be done with a bit of finessing. I have to say, this is one of my favorite drawings that I've done in a while. Like, I really enjoy the proportions and the design. It's very much the kind of thing I enjoy drawing. It's edgy and extremely proportioned and cartoony and fun. And of course, very obvious who it is. It is Hellboy. But it's really interesting, of course, because again, most of us know Hellboy from the movies. The comic book style of the character actually is way more edgy looking. And the position of the horns is on the front of his head, which almost looks like glasses or goggles, you know, sort of pulled up on the forehead. I don't know about you, but I like my Hellboy. I would read that Hellboy comic. Let me know what you think. It's fun to see what the design prompts, what the core elements of a character's design can end up as if they're handed to a different designer with zero context. All right, we got time for one more. Lucky last character four is going to be an angry, dangerous outlaw with a black eye mask. They have a red shirt, black boots, blue denim jeans, and two revolvers. Character four has red hair, a yellow scarf tied around his neck, and a belt with a large gold buckle. Along with a long mustache and beard, they have a big tan colored wide brimmed hat. I'm getting very Western vibes, but I'm just gonna work with these elements as my prompts and see where we end up. I mean, if I just put the colors down, saturated and on a Mr. Potato Head, I assume it's like from a children's show or cartoon. But the first prompt, it's an angry and dangerous outlaw. I'm gonna use that as my anchor and style the whole thing around that because you wouldn't have an angry and dangerous outlaw in a kid's show or something. I don't know with this one. I want to make sure to get the pose and proportions right for this one. A bit of swagger to his stance. Someone who knows that they're going to win against anyone they confront. And making sure all of those features get a bit of attention. Now I'm quite happy with this as a result of the sketch process. The colors is where it's going to be interesting because it could look silly very quickly if I don't find the right balance. So yellow will be a little more mustard. The red will be a little more burgundy. I'm going to pull everything back into a more earthy, gritty, desaturated tone of color and see if I can find the angry, scary outlaw from the design props that we were given. I think in the end I struck the right balance. Not too saturated and cartoony looking and it actually looks reasonably believable for a gritty western character. Last but not least, let's see what Alicia can do. And after all of that, I, I, I still don't have a clue. I have no idea who this character is. I feel like I just went in a very different direction to what they are. My first guess was like someone from Toy Story, but it's not Woody, because he's got orange hair and a beard. I thought Jesse because of the red hair, but the beard. So it's probably not Toy Story, maybe it is. I don't know. But I actually, actually don't know for this one. So let me know in the comments if you guessed. Let's find out who this character is. Yosemite Sam! Yosemite Sam! Yosemite Sam! It's 
Yosemite Sam. Yosemite Sam. Yosemite. Yeah, Yosemite Sam. That's not bad. I feel like I've definitely done the gritty reboot of Yosemite Sam. And in fact, I feel like we could pick a few pieces of his voice lines and just throw it on this guy and it'll be perfect. Any one of you lily-livered, bow-legged varmints care to slap leather with me? In case any of you get any ideas, you better know who you're dealing with. I'm the hootinest, tootinest, shootinest, bobtail wildcat in the West. This was a lot of fun. I loved our results. I'm not sure if I love the Mr. Potato Heads even more though. So let me know in the comments if you think that method works really well. And of course, if you wanna see me do more of this, you guys have loved this so far. I love doing it because it's character design sessions. And thanks to having the help of Alicia and your support on Patreon, it means that I can do more characters without compromising on quality because I can afford to get her help to take it even further. Thank you so much. I hope you've had a blast. I have, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.